Good morning everyone. I hope you're all well today. Today I'm going to try something a little bit different, a little bit to add on to personal reads. I'm going to go into astrology a little bit because I think that it's so important to understand and it's part of tarot anyway, it's such an important part of tarot. So what I would like to do is I would like to take 10 minute snippets to look at somebody, somebody haphazard's chart and I'm going to go through it really slowly so that if you're new to astrology you get an idea of how to read a chart because to me it's easier to be thrown into the deep end to learn all the different aspects and to learn all the different placements bit by bit can sometimes you can feel like you're drowning in it so I'm going to throw you in the deep end because that's how I learn and then you can go back and find out more for yourself if you want to so this is going to be a 10 minute reading on somebody's chart and I will go through it to hope. So hopefully you will learn something. If you are, you know, quite adept at astrology or you know quite a lot, hopefully you, know, you can help me out and we can learn things together. Right. So about a couple of weeks ago, my daughter got together five people for me to read their chart. And she took the name off them. So I didn't know who any of them were. I did this person's, I'm going to say it's a man's chart. And... It was quite interesting and I videoed it and I was going to give it you in the same format and say at the end of the video who it is. Um, and then I lost the video. So I know who this person is, but in the future, probably, maybe not the next one because I still have somebody else to do who I found out too. Um, it will be somebody who I don't know. So we will be, we will be basically trawling through the chart together. Anyway, enough said, let's get on with the reading. So here we have the astrology chart and the astrology chart is like a circle or something that you hold inside yourself. It's like an imprint on one of those old fashioned tapes that you hold inside your body your whole life and it gets basically hit off by other planets that move around the sun. But this is your basic signature. It will be your chart that you hold some, I don't know how, some sort of like magnetic resonance inside you. It's really bizarre. I don't even know how it works. Um, and your chart is divided into different houses. And the houses in your chart are basically like um, scenes in a play. It's like the backdrop comes down and the scene is ready to be played. For instance, your fifth house, if it were a backdrop or a scene in a play, would be something like... Um, a beach or something fun or sports activities or just generally, I don't know, it could be gambling. It's just a particular scene that is set and then your planets fall into it and that's how they play out. It is just amazing. I don't even know how it works, which I've said before. Um, just one more thing before we start. Your chart is also divided with a cross that goes across the horizontal axis and a cross through the vertical axis. Now these are extremely important in astrology because anything that conjuncts, which means stuck on these axes especially, is really significant in your chart. Really significant in your chart. So what I'm going to do is I've got some tarot cards here and I'm going to do a 10 minute run through, approximately 10 minutes of somebody who I now know who it is, but I'm, you're going to try and guess or think or just go through the process with me for 10 minutes to see what you know or what you can learn or, you know, a lot of it's very sort of basic. I'm not going to go too, too much into aspects. It's just a bit of fun, hopefully. Right. So this person who I am doing their chart for is a man. And you'll probably realise that they um, they were born quite a while ago, so it's not somebody up to date. I don't know when my daughter chose it. So let's get going. The first thing that um, I would look at when doing somebody's chart is the ascendant. If you have the correct time of birth, the ascendant shows you how you come across to people. It, it could, be, could be your body type, it could be just the way that you look, the way that you move, the way that your face is structured. And this person's ascendant is in... Do you know what? Stay there. Woohoo, we're back. Um, I've just changed my chart around a bit so I've got Virgo here. So this person's ascendant is in Virgo, which is somebody who is conventionally good looking because their face is quite symmetrical. They're normally quite, I know this person hasn't, but they're normally quite small body types. They're normally just 
conventionally good looking and they age really slowly. First one that comes to mind, I've said it many times before in entire readings, Keanu Reeves. He's got so many planets in Virgo and his face is just perfectly structured. He just looks good looking, you know, in a very normal, clean way, a clean way. So once I've found out the person's ascendant, I, go, I then go to see where their ascendant ruler falls into. And this person's ascendant ruler is Mercury and it falls into, hold on, I'm just looking at my phone here. It falls into the seventh house, which is Aries. So straight away, I'm thinking with his chart ruler in Aries is somebody, because Mercury is like how you convert, it's how you think, it's basically how you communicate. So it, to be in the seventh house, this person, ignoring the house it's fallen into just the fact that it's in Aries makes this person very direct in the way that they speak they are very um probably abrupt straightforward uh, just direct really I'm trying to think what else they will go through apart from Virgo here if Virgo like to have long-winded mental processes, they can be very wordy, they can talk a lot, but putting that in Aries will make this man much more succinct in what they're saying. Now, the most important bit I found when I actually did find out who this person was, was the fact that their chart ruler conjuncts Uranus. And you've, you've got to remember, you haven't got to remember because I haven't told you, but this person was born quite a long time ago. So Uranus is a very progressive planet. It's very sort of avant-garde. It's very much a maverick. It does things its own way. It doesn't like to follow people. And the fact that this planet of communication is conjunct this person's Uranus makes them be quite, I would say, quite shocking in their speech. They like things to be different. They're not afraid to stand up for what they believe in and they will say it and they will voice it very openly so right from the very beginning i'm getting an impression of somebody virgo speech is very important to them and then with this planet conjunct their their ruler of their first house it's somebody who is quite shocking in the way that they speak they are basically with sorry excuse me with their speech they could change the way things are going to move for a huge amount of people Hmm. I'm just thinking this person actually studied creative writing as well when they were in college. Okay, and art as well. So Uranus is quite artistic. They like things to be different. They're very, very sort of liberal. They don't like things to be put into boxes. They like things to flow. They like creativity. So anyway, so far this person, as far as I can tell from this chart, is somebody who is who communication is very important to and it's probably in some shocking manner or some very different manner that moves people along in their lives or in generational leaps in some way right hold on i'm just going to take a break and find out the next one okay the next planet that i would probably put into this chart to get give me an even better picture is this person saturn the reason why i chose saturn after the chart ruler is because it is this chart is a locomotive locomotion i don't know it runs like a train and the ruler of the train the basically the person driving is in saturn in the second house in scorpio so to me i'm getting a picture of somebody who's quite a bit of a rebel a bit sort of an activist somebody who verbally likes to spout out life changes for people and then you come down here to the chart not the chart ruler the the oh, excuse me the planet that is pulling all the other planets along with it so this is going to be it's the head of the train it pulls the whole chart along with it and this person saturn in scorpio is actually in a really nice aspect to his mercury and later on his sun so the saturn is in Scorpio, to me, it's, it's that restriction. It's hard working, but in Scorpio, it's something with depth. It could be, and they like things to be big. It's like sex, rebirth. Um, it's just basically a planet that will, to me, it feels like harshness because Scorpio is powerful and Saturn is restrictive, but it works and it trudges and it trudges until it gets what it wants. So this person, I think, is quite driven. The second house can often be, well, it is finances and it's self-worth as well and things like that. So this person has a strength about them. 
and with the fact that it falls into Saturn, um, excuse me, into Scorpio, makes me think that this person earns their money through extremely hard work through some sort of Scorpio, as we talked before on the stage of Scorpio. If you think of lots of Scorpios on stage, it would be something to do with research. Um, hell digging deep into everybody's personal lives that basically have written themselves apart or something sexual. So the picture is coming together for me at the moment. I don't know if it is for you. Okay, I'm now going to jump into this person's fifth house because the fifth house has got two quite important planets in them so it's going to give you even a, a bigger picture to add on to the bits that we've talked about before the fifth house to me is it's the house of play it's the house of fun it's the house of it's leo it's the house of wanting to be the center now this person's mars falls into their fifth house in Aquarius. So to me, this adds on to the Uranus feel and the fact that they actually have two planets in the fifth house is quite significant. So this person's Mars falls into Aquarius, which makes them a show off, a show off with a different flair. Fifth house Mars is basically something that likes attention. They like to be boss of the sandbox. I'm gonna add the next planet to this one because it adds even more to it. Their Jupiter also falls in, conjuncts their Mars in the fifth house. So these two planets are very forward thinking, no, excuse me, very forward moving, quite aggressive in a big way. Mars is aggressive, Jupiter's not aggressive, but it basically, it blows things out of the water. It exaggerates everything. And the fact is in the fifth house, this person likes to have fun. They like, they like life to be fun and they expect it to be fun and if it's not going to come towards them they're going to go out and grab it so this person is a big time show off a real big time fun loving show off when i first saw this chart i kept thinking it was the chart of a comedian because i'm thinking those planets jupiter real sort of comedian jupiter and mars is quite aggressive and assertive and being in aquarius is going to be quite quick and different and I kept thinking this has got to be a comedian it's got to be a comedian um, and it wasn't <laughs> and it wasn't to me these two planets in the fifth house when this person was in school I would say they would be boss of the sandbox if there was like a sand pit and this child was in the sand pit with his friends it would be the person the child that was making the most noise having the most fun and telling everybody else what to do so, so far, the picture that we're getting of this person is somebody who is quite different and very different in their speech, very freedom loving, very free thinking. I shouted that, sorry. Um, and then I went on to here with a Saturn, which was basically the drive for the whole chart. And it was in Scorpio, which I think is quite sexual. Or oh, it can be quite interested in rebirths and deaths and that sort of thing, which is very sort of that sort of thing is downplaying it a bit but then you go into this fifth house and this whole chart starts coming even more to life with these planets here so i'm getting the impression fifth house and this rebel planet conjunct their speech somebody who's quite rebellious somebody who's quite maverick quite rebellious right then the next planet we have got is neptune so this is where it all starts getting a little bit more interesting for me so these two planets we've just discussed here in the fifth house, which are very forward thinking, very forward moving, very exuberant, very um, expansive, jovial, aggressive all together because they're conjunct together. So this person's basically these energies sit together and it's very fun loving, as we've just said. Now, if you go up here to the, the 12th house here, I'm just going to put this here because I'm not going to talk about the house with Neptune because I don't feel it's that important with regards to what we're going to say next. Um, these fun loving childlike planets um, and expansive and they like things to be bigger. They're not so subtle, these planets. And this person wants life to be fun. Now, these are totally opposite Neptune and Neptune is the planet of illusions i keep thinking the kardashians and her husband i can't remember his name to me they're quite neptune -y. it's it's things you can't quite grasp hold of and you know it can be a little bit disruptive to your mental processes let me be very kind here because it's just things just aren't real 
if you've got a strong nectar in your chart, you don't want to drink because you end up getting lost in it. But you do want to be creative. And this person is a real soft planet. It's the planet that makes you fall in love and have rose-tinted glasses. So this person has this drive, has this childlike exuberance, but it's totally opposite Neptune. So they are lost in an illusion. They would like to probably, because the creative house is the fifth house, they want to create, but they want to create illusion. So you're getting a picture now of how they're going to basically create anything in their life. Is going to have some sort of beauty, Neptune, some sort of illusion around it. You know, it's often the planet you find people who are in the media, as in um, anybody, an actor or an actress, heavy Neptune. It's illusion, it's just basically the planet where things don't feel real. So people fall in love with people on the box that they haven't seen, you know, because they can create an illusion beautifully. Right, okay, next planet is the sun. The sun, I'm just going to add to this, um, these two, these three planets here, because it's all in Aries. So Aries, with this full fifth house, is somebody who is assertive, aggressive, likes to shine and likes to be... Um, they're not shy in saying what they want and getting what they want. It's not somebody who ums and ahs whether it's going to be a little bit dis disrespectful if they go and ask for some, go use the toilet in some public place. They're basically, they've, they've done it. And with these planets here as well, in the seventh house, it's somebody with regards to relationships. Um, they like to connect. The seventh house is like long-term relationships normally or partnerships. So this person needs connections. The seventh house has a very sort of stelium, I suppose, um, with these planets here. In Aries, assertive, like need to connect a real twist on the way that they mentally take in life and verbally give out what they're thinking, what they are thinking, and they will do it very directly. Okay, moon. Ah, okay, moon is in the sixth house, and I'm going to put Neptune with that straight away. Now, the sixth house is the house of work and service and day to day life, and you know, very often basically gives you a really good inkling of your job and how you earn your money. Now, the moon and Venus there to me with this Neptune here, let me just see some aspects to that. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 but. In the house of work, if you have Moon and Venus, they're very feminine planets. They're very, and they're in Pisces as well. So this person, very like Neptune, likes things to be beautiful. They just love women. They love anything that is probably dreamy, um, creative writing. Very dreamy, very much... I'm trying to think of the words here. I don't really know. They love women. They love beauty, they love creativity, they love um, illusions. It's just, it's all that. It's a real softness amongst this harshness of the Aries here. This Aries is very direct and there's a softness here to do with work, where they like beauty, they like things to more illusions, more illusions. And I know that this man was very close to his mother and it was his mother who lent him his, his initial big lump, Sorry, big sum of money to start off his business. So this person actually really does like women. <laughs> I'm sure you're getting inkling where I'm going here. Sexual, hardworking, loves women, boss of the sandbox, you know, really probably enjoys his own voice, but very different, very sort of liberated in their speech and the way that they want to live their life. And they will probably project that onto other people because the seventh house as well is a projection. You know, this person will find other people in their life who they basically pull towards them that have those qualities. Okay. The last planet, I hope this hasn't gone longer than 10 minutes. How long have I gone on? Eight minutes, 36. Right, your last planet that I'm gonna put on to give you more of a picture of this person is going up here and the first time I did this chart, because it's conjunct with North Node, the North Node is like a, it's like a doorway. It's a doorway that you need to open in this life to progress in this life. You're, it's opposite your South Node, which falls down here, and opposite, totally opposite. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. And 
that basically is all the talents and everything you've brought with you from your past life, but you don't need to do it. You've done it before, so don't go over that. Let's go forward to your north node. So this person's north node is in the 10th house. The 10th house, if it were a play, as we said earlier, would be a business, would be a career, would be basically how the larger, how people outside of their home environment and their friends see them. It's the bit that you would have on your epitaph. This person will remember for this. And remember down here, this person's ruler, they're not ruler of their chart. The planet that pulls their chart along is Saturn, hard work, and it's in Scorpio, which is ruled by Pluto. Now, this Pluto is conjunct this person's north node. So the direction that they need to take in their life is very Plutonic or is very sexual, or is very powerful in some way. When I first read this, and I'm glad I didn't actually publish it, because I kept thinking, I'm thinking of a comedian, and then I saw the Pluto on the North Node, and I'm thinking, oh my God, it sounds like a comedian who set off the Waco disaster. Because Pluto's a really strong planet to have on your North Node. So this person has made changes, in, but probably in the way that they have their career, and it's reached other people on a larger scale. Right, so I'm going to sum this up now because I don't only want to do 10 minutes um, and then I'm going to tell you who it is and the little bits I found out afterwards. So here you have this person who is Virgo rising. So they're very sort of neat looking. They probably could have been good looking when they were younger. Um, I know who this is. And I'm not so sure about that one. They're very symmetrical. They're very neat and tidy in the way that they dress normally. But that could be basically blown out of the water because opposite this you have, which is a real major part of their chart, you have their chart ruler, which is Mercury, which is communication, um, how they speak, how they think, and how they basically process their thoughts. And it's conjunct Uranus. So this person is what I would say is a real liberator. They're, pe they're somebody who verbally or mentally wants to free people and themselves. Because it's in the seventh house, I'm going to say people. And their sun is in Aries as well as these three planets. Um, so this person really has a strong individual sense of wanting to make the world fairer and they're not afraid to do it in an aggressive manner. They're not afraid to be quite rebellious about it, being an activist about it. Okay, right, and then we basically, when do we get to that? To Mars, the, the fifth house is full, the fifth house is play and fun and excitement, recreation, gambling, sports. And this man's fifth house is full of um, two very sporty, aggressive, assertive, fun-loving planets. This person knows how to get what they want. They're not going to be shy about asking for anything. Uh, but the thing that I found quite in interesting is very masculine planets down here in the fifth house. So, you know, going to be in your face. Opposite Neptune. Once again, there's this creativity, this art artistry, and this love of illusion and beauty. Then the sixth house again here. Venus with the moon in the sixth house loves his mummy and that's put into his everyday work scenarios where once again two very feminine planets in the way that this person probably earns his living very um beauty orientated very sort of soft and intuitive and beauty 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 is what i'm thinking here and the final one, I'm going to leave Saturn there because we've talked about that. And to be honest, I don't, I don't know why I don't find that interesting, but I don't. Pluto conjunct your north node in your 10th house. There's something you have to do. If this was your chart, there was something you would have to do in this lifetime that is going to rock a huge amount of people. And it's, Pluto is a group of people. It's not normally one person. It'd be a group. If you have Pluto on your nodes and you share that with somebody in sinistry in some way, it's normally, I would say... In past lives or in this life, you need to work as part of a group. So this person is going to be quite a shocker in, part, in, a, in a group sense. Right, are you ready? I'm going to tell you it is now. <laughs> I'd, actually, I really laughed the first time I saw this. I'm, I looked at my door and thought, why did you do that? This person is Hugh Hefner. And I thought this chart was so interesting because my first thought was, oh, geez, no. And there's all like feminists are rolling around thinking that is awful. And I agree with you, totally agree with you. But I can't help being admiring these qualities here. 
I feel like I should apologise for that, but this man, I think, disillusioned probably with regards to how women, but you've got to remember this was a long time ago, and I think if he was born today, I don't know if it would come out in the same sort of sexist way. He would always want to be boss. Aries is probably, yeah, he'd probably put, want to be a boss of a harem. Is that the correct word? Anyway, to be honest. But I don't think he disliked women. He wasn't trying to be derogatory, is that the correct word, to women. Although he was, because it was just part of his time. You know, he was. It was just, it wasn't right. But I think he actually had a love and an admiration for women. And I know, please don't slate me for what I'm trying to say. Um, I don't really know what I feel about that or think about it. You know, I know it's wrong, and I do, but I'm just trying to see people's chart and their intentions. And I'll, if you just bear with me, I'm going to say something nice about him now. He actually, um, with all this Uranus and this Mercury and the Sun in his seventh house, which is basically how we relate to people, um, partnerships, and it's, it's going to be a shocker. It's going to be somebody who talks freely and changes people's thoughts. Because he definitely had a big influence on people, for right or for wrong. Because I don't really agree with flipping Playboy bunnies and all that lot. It just it seems incredibly... Well, it's not my type of thing. Um, but he did, during his lifetime, he was he set up a lot of private key clubs. And I'm not sure what these are, but they promoted people getting together in racially diverse environments and I'm not sure whether they were clubs as in like dancing clubs I haven't looked into that deeply but it was something that was quite different at the time and during the civil rights movement he organized um, a black man called Alex Haley to go and interview somebody called George Lincoln Rockwell um, who shouldn't really have had Lincoln in his name because he was the founder of the American Nazi party and it was quite a big thing at that time and um, George Rockwell said okay, after a while, I will agree with it, but only um, if he's not Jewish. Now, to be honest, it, well, I don't, I don't need to say anything. Anyway, the interview went ahead, and it, could, it was a shock at that time, so to me, they just personify these planets, Aries, Mercury, Uranus, it's, you know, and his whole life was Mercury, wasn't it? Because it was, it was communication in verbal, <laughs> no, actually, that's wrong, it wasn't verbal, <laughs> It was pictorial, um, but he did. He was a, into publishing, which is very. I'm going to say Sagittarius, but it's also communicating. Yeah, yeah, I know. Okay, I know what I'm not saying. What I'm saying there. Um, as I was saying, anyway. So this meeting with Alex Haley and George Lincoln Rockwell was um, was a big deal at the time. It was recreated in the series or the film. I'm not sure it's a series or film with James Earl Jones playing Alex Haley and Marlon Brando playing George Lincoln Rockwell. Um, and during the interview, um, George Rockwell had a gun on the desk as he was being interviewed by Alex Haley. What was all that about? I don't know. So this man was a real activist and a rebel. And I know he had a Playboy mansion and Playboy bunnies, but I'm just half ignoring that because I really like this energy here. And I can see where this energy comes from with his love for women, his love for his mother who supported him with his first Playboy magazine, um, and his, just his drive and his need to be centre. And it's, it was, it was world-changing in positive and negative ways. So he did have, you know, I think he felt, which is, I know isn't an excuse, he felt that I think that he admired women and loved women. And I know he, it was wrong but he does have other qualities and sticking up. I don't know why I'm sticking up for you, Lef. No, I really don't know. But he does have other qualities, which I think were quite admirable. And this is the 1960s, so, you know, things were different with men and women and things were definitely different with race then. So, whatever you think of Hugh Hefner, I admire parts of him. I'm sorry to say I do admire parts of him. I know... Fe you know, women in mansions, dressed in bikinis, or whatever happened, it, to me, feels like animals in the zoo. But, you know, that's, that, that aside. Anyway, I'm going to finish that. I hope you enjoyed this. The reason I wanted to do it was for you, hopefully, to 
be thrown in the deep end and start thinking about things differently and then you can start putting your own chart together and you pick up bits if you listen you just pick up bits about houses and oppositions and nodes and it all starts to sink in bit by bit and i think it's such an important part for anybody part's the wrong word to be able to understand their own chart because once you understand your own chart you're far more tolerant with yourself and you're more tolerant with others because you know that everybody's got different energy and we're all struggling to bring all together the best bits and that's it what i would like to do in the future is to i might do one more chart which i've done already and i know who it is and then i would like to perhaps do charts where i don't know who they are because i did actually find that really interesting then i ran off and did a you know a, a couple of hours of looking at hugh hefner never looked at him before to me it fascinates me you know, it fascinates me how you can be born with a magnetic stamp running around inside you and you actually outplay it over and over again it's just bizarre but it works okay well thank you very much um to everybody um please let me know in the comment section what you think don't be too harsh because i might cry a little bit um and how i could improve it or something else you might want me to do um, and please send me probably via and my email of anybody's chart you would like me to do. It, even if you just give me the dates would be even better and just tell me to go and look it up. But make sure it's not somebody really bizarre. I don't know, like some I don't know, tadpole or something. It's got to be somebody that everybody knows. I don't, you know. Okay, right. Thank you very much for listening. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope you learned something. <laughs> I, I did. Um, I'll see you again. Bye.